Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, we are checking out one of the coolest pieces of computer hardware that I have had in a long time. Now, I know I've said that about a lot of hardware recently, but I just keep buying a bunch of really cool stuff and I also keep getting sent a bunch of cool stuff, so that's super exciting. But in today's video, we are checking out this. This is a motherboard from Azeroc Rack. And if you don't know what Azeroc Rack is, that is Azeroc's lineup of server slash workstation motherboards. And it's got some pretty awesome stuff in its lineup, such as this motherboard. Specifically, this is the Azeroc Rack EPC621D8A. Yep, that's what it is. So let's open this thing up and see what comes inside. Oh wow, that's a mess. For reference, I got this on eBay and it comes with all of its original stuff. It's just not packaged as it would be. It looks like everything's inside. Let's see what we got for accessories. It looks like we have just loose a U.2 to 4, that's just regular SATA or SAS connectors. One, two, three, four SATA cables. Driver installation disc that no one uses. IO shield and yes, the motherboard. I love it. This motherboard has all the features that you'd like to see on a professional workstation PC. Two M.2 slots, six PCI Express slots, eight RAM slots. Now, I'm a little confused about the eight. You can see the coloring kind of is weird. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but just know that that's weird. We got U.2, we got weird fan headers, weirdly placed eight pin power connector and 24 pin and a bunch of other six server grade features now before anyone says anything because i can already tell someone's going to comment it yes i know why the 24 pin and eight pin are where they are it's because this was meant to be in a server and not in my possession that's cool and all but let's talk about the main event this this is a singular lga 3647 socket and it is massive if we take this cover off which i know i'm gonna regret if I do it incorrectly. Putting my hands anywhere near this socket is terrifying, but wait to see how you install the CPU. This socket has 3,647 pins in it and has one of the widest ranges of crazy CPUs that fit in it. But in today's video, we're going to be filling that socket with this. This is an Intel Confidential, unknown core count, unknown clock speed, don't even know if it works, Xeon scalable CPU for socket LGA3647. This CPU can be anywhere from 4 to 28 cores. I have been told that it is likely a 20 core 40 thread CPU from the Xeon Gold family, but that it could be anything else. On the front of the CPU, it says Intel Confidential. That means this is an engineering sample CPU, which I thought was a nice little touch. And in today's video, all I wanna do is put this CPU in the socket, install a cooler, and, well, test this to see what it is and if it works. And then in a follow-up video, I wanna do performance testing and, yes, gaming testing, as well as put this in a build. So this will be a couple part series about this board and it's definitely not going away anytime soon, especially when you find out that the board itself was over 300 US dollars. So the way to mount it in the socket is terrifying, to say the least. Basically, you just, you take it, you figure out which way it goes, and you just kind of, oh god, I can't afford another one of these. You just, you just kind of, kind of leave it there. Yep, there's no retention mechanism or anything. You are entirely relying on the tension force of our CPU cooler to keep this thing in. And speaking of cooler, to cool this behemoth of a CPU, we have this adorable little heatsink. This is Noctua's NH-D9 LGA3647, and it has this giant cold plate to cover up the entire IHS of the CPU. I do want to say thank you to Noctua, who actually sent me this cooler to use for testing of this build. So, um, it's pretty awesome. This is a really nice cooler. I will have this cooler and some other Noctua products that I really like in the description below. So, thank you, Noctua, for sending me this, uh, to cool the CPU, because it's probably pretty hot. But, that's the point. So, the mounting is weird. It's got like these poles and you just, it's not really interesting. You just kind of shove them on and hope your CPU's lined up. Seems about right. And then you just take their tool. This socket seems like it has too much risk of just like, oh, your cooler's not lined up properly. There goes all of the pins because there's just 
so much torque. All right, that seems about good. And we rolled out our 92 millimeter fans. It actually has two 92 millimeter fans that come with it, which is super cool. Right after we install our RAM. To my knowledge, this board supports both ECC registered and non-ECC registered and ECC non-registered DIMMs or and LR DIMMs. It supports a lot of different types of memory. And on the topic of memory, you may notice that this board has eight slots, but six of them are blue and two of them are white. I don't know what the white slots are for at all, but the six blue slots are for the six channel memory. Yes, six channel memory that this CPU supports, which is awesome. Now, sadly, I do not have, nor can I afford a six channel memory kit. That's a lot of money. So we're going to be using four sticks for today. When I do a final build with this thing, I'm going to max out the memory with something sick, but for now, I'm gonna be using these custom dims. We're just going to, I don't know which slots to use when we're not using all six. So I'm just gonna kind of start going at it and open for the best. Well, triple channel it is then. It's a little barren on this side, but if it works, it works. This is a bendy board. I don't like it. All right, last thing, let's get our fans mounted on this thing. So again, it is just two of these really nice Noctua 92mm fans. I'm going to try not to mount stupidly. I'm actually going to install one for this video, because I have a feeling this heatsink has enough space that I only need one right here in the middle. And there we go. That's in a... I love this cooler. 92mm. It's such a cute but awesome fan size, so I love it for coolers like this. Dual tower, it's just... it's adorable. Let's get this thing installed in a test bench and... Pray that it actually functions. Moment of truth, guys. Guess we'll just turn it on with this. Onboard header. Now, I'm pretty sure these boards, actually, I'm like 100% sure boards like this have just an extremely long boot process due to the sheer amount of onboard devices that need to be turned on and checked every time the board is booted. Because these boards are meant to turn on and then stay on for like months or similar. They're not meant to be turned off and on like a normal system. Although that's probably what I'm going to end up doing with it when it becomes a gaming PC or something stupid. Guys, subscribe if you, and, and like this video if you want to see more because I have some sick projects planned with this board if it actually works. I planned a lot of stuff uh, for this board and CPU combo if either of them work. I'm really hoping for like a, a 18 to 22 core, something like that. I mean, 28 core would be great, but I don't expect to get a Xeon Platinum 8180 anytime soon. So let's see what CPU I got. A CPU. Oh, hey! Oh, right, oh, fuck. Ah, shoot. Are we going to boot to win? Oh my god, that worked right away. I've had a lot of server boards that will not boot to Windows first try. They will be annoying about it. Anything with two or more sockets is a pain. Windows 10 will only recognize two sockets max, so obviously anything above that. But this CPU actually does support dual socket. Well, I should say this lineup of CPUs. I don't know which, which one this one is specifically. Uh, we don't have drivers, which is cool. All right, let's check task manager. Oh, we don't have internet either. Is this a management port? Did I plug us into the management port? Am I an idiot? Well, we don't have internet. We did get drivers for our graphics card. Moment of truth, guys. Let's check Task Manager. And according to Task Manager, we are rocking RX 580, disk zero, mem uh, 24 gigs of memory. Sick. And CPU. Oh, Xeon Gold 6138 at 2 gigahertz. Yes, 20 cores, 40 threads. Oh, Oh, this is going to be so much fun. This is a 20 core, 40 thread CPU. That's insane. Ooh, did, I just saw it boost up to th above 3 gigahertz. What is the boost clock in the CPU? Xeon Gold 6138. Skylake server 2017. Recommended customer price $2,612 in 2017. That's not that long ago. 20 cores, 40 threads, max turbo, 3.7 gigahertz. Insane. TDP is only 125 watts. Eh, cooler, slightly warm. Okay, real quick, I want to test like one game. I want to do a whole video testing games and stuff on this thing, but I want to test one game real quick. Oh man, I'm so excited. Guys, again, please stay subscribed if you want to see more on the CPU. 20 cores.
This could make a sick streaming PC. I could use it to game, which I'm about to do now, but I want to do a whole video. Actually, this, this is heating up a little bit. Okay. I see why it came with two fans. This, uh, side note, this fin stack is pretty sharp. I mean, I get it. They're thin fins because they're supposed to be, like, thin and dense. It's, it's weird. But, like, I'm kind of worried about cutting myself. This is not the right GPU for this. I'm going to need uh, one of those, like, industrial. I need a quadro. That's what I need. Stay tuned if you want me to get a quadro. Guys, while GTA is loading, I just have the sickest idea. I should buy a quadro and pair it with the Xeon Scalable and pair it with server RAM and then make a gaming PC out of only components that were never meant to go in a gaming PC. I'm going to do it. I love it. So uh, hit that sub button. Hit the like button if you want to see that. And uh, I don't know, follow my Twitch so I can make enough money to buy that. My specs still come up as 8700K and 1070. That's not exactly correct. So just, I don't know. I'm not recording anything, but just thought I'd let you know that that is incorrect. Our RX 580 is the bottleneck. Are you kidding me? This is a 20 core CPU. Uh-uh. No, no, son. Get back here. I'm going to run you over. Yeet. Hold on, let me turn down my graphic settings just a skosh. I want to see what I see. So our CPU is comfortably boosting to 3.4 gigahertz. I don't know if we can, if we'll see the 3.7. But we're getting over 100 FPS, and I guess it's expected for the 3 gigahertz, and it's very responsive. Uh, yeah, no, this is exactly as expected. Uh, 100 FPS, GTA 5. I think this thing will make a great gaming PC that costed way more money than it's worth in performance. You know, if paired with the right graphics cards, I could make like a $10,000 gaming PC that is somehow worse than most $1,000 gaming PCs. Nope. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Oh. What'd I do? Did I break it? Um, I think I pushed on the heatsink, which then pushed on the mount. My bad. With that, I'm going to end this little video and tell you guys to stay tuned for part two where I do a bunch of dis different testing on the CPU. I definitely will install a second and maybe even a third fan on this heatsink for the testing because uh, this is definitely a hot boy. But I want to see if we can hit that nice 3.7 gigahertz boost and, uh, and see what we can do with some games with a system like this. Hopefully we don't run into any kind of issues. Um, I don't know what I just did there with the restart, but let's shut this down. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys kind of enjoyed it. Again, stay tuned for a lot more content on this board and build as so long as they are still working by the time I'm done with them. Plus, I've got some fun other stuff around this board, including a very awesome cooler. And I've got a ton of awesome content planned, so again, stay tuned if you want to see that. But that's this point. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Holy fuck.